So in this video, I'm just going to do some examples of using the rules and results we've talked about in the introductory video to calculate some derivatives of more complicated functions. So these are the kind of questions you might get on the practice sheet this week. So for example, the things you need to know, first of all, are these seven basic results, how to differentiate the basic functions like x to the n, sine x, cos x, and so on. So we'll make use of these. And you also need to know the product rule and the chain rule, which tell you how to differentiate various combinations of these basic functions. Okay, so I'll just do a few examples to reinforce these ideas if you're still not sure yet. Um, so the first one I want to do is probably the most simple example you can take. What if I want to differentiate sine of 2x? So this is actually an example where you need to use the chain rule. In this case, the function f of g of x is sine of 2x. Okay, So g of x is 2x. So therefore, the derivatives are g prime of x is just 2 and f prime of g of x sine differentiates to cos of cos of 2x. So the rule tells me that the answer is going to be f prime of g of x, which is this, multiplied by g prime of x, which is this. So therefore, the answer is 2 times cos of 2x. So that's nice and simple. And it's Generally, you will, you will see, as you do these examples, if I've got a function where it's a number times x, then when I differentiate, this number just comes and multiplies at the front. So other similar examples are, if I take d by dx of e to the 3x, so here the number is 3, that number just comes out the front as well when I differentiate. If I differentiate, say, 5x all to the power n, then this becomes n times 5x to the n minus 1. And the number here is 5. That just comes out the front and multiplies again. So these are all examples where it's a basic function, but instead of x, you've got some number times x. A second example, which is also an application of the chain rule. Let's suppose I want to calculate the derivative of log of cosine of x. So again, it's a chain rule problem. In this case, the function g of x is cos x. So therefore, the derivative g prime x is minus sine x. These are results on that basic seven results sheet I showed you. And then the function f is log. So f of g of x is log of cos x. And you know if you differentiate log, then you just get 1 over the, the function. So here I'll get 1 over cos x. Okay. So the chain rule tells me the derivative of log of cos x is this times this. OK, so you should know that sine x divided by cos x is just tangent to tan x. Okay, so the answer here is minus tangent of x. Okay, so again, this is a kind of typical example. If you've got log of some function, then what you end up with is the function on the bottom and the derivative of the function on, on the top. So in general here, if you differentiate the log of some function f of x, then the original function f of x goes on the bottom, and you get the derivative of that function on the top here. And that's exactly what we've shown in the example here, using the chain rule again. OK. So next, I'll do a basic example using the product rule. Let's suppose I want to do d by dx of 
e to the 2x times mm, sine of x, sine of 3x. Okay, so these are actually examples where you need to use the, the chain rule in the basic sense I explained here. So we know that e to the 2x differentiates to 2e to the 2x. So this is f prime of x here. Yeah? I'll call this one f and I'll call this one g. So then g prime of x is 3 cosine 3x. And the rule says the derivative is f prime times g. So that's 2e to the 2x times sine of 3x plus f of x times g prime. So that's e to the 2x times this. So that will give me 3e to the 2x cos 3x. Okay, so that's the answer. It's nice to factorize if possible. So this is e to the 2x, 2 sine 3x plus 3 cos 3x. Okay. So this number three is an example of using the product rule. Okay. For the fourth example, then I'm going to combine these two. So I'm going to give you an example where you need to use the chain rule and the product rules together. So let's suppose I want to compute the derivative of e to the minus x squared sine x squared. Okay. So if I separate these two functions here, then each of these you can use the chain rule on. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll do this as an aside. Okay. So f of x is e to the minus x squared. Okay. So this means that f prime of x is, is, is a chain rule example. So f is e to the whatever, and g is minus x squared. So g prime of x is going to be minus 2x. And f prime, well, f is e to the, well, the exponential function, therefore it stays the same. So I get e to the minus x squared again. Okay there. Okay. On the other side, I've got g of x, which is sine of x squared. Okay. So this again, you need to use the chain rule for. Here I've got x squared, so that gives me 2x, and the derivative of sine is cosine, so I get this. Okay. So if I put these results into here, then the answer is f prime x times g of x, that's minus 2x e to the minus x squared times sine x squared, that's the first term here. The second term is f of x g prime of x, that's this times this, so that's plus 2x e to the minus x squared cos x squared, and again it's nice to factorize if you can. So in this case, I can write this as 2x e to the x minus x squared times cos x squared minus sine x squared. OK, so that's an example where I've had to use the chain rule, first of all, to calculate the derivatives of f and g, and then the product rule to calculate the total derivative of this function here. Okay. So I just want to give two more examples of these before we finish. Um, so the next example is again a kind of common form which can come up. What happens if I have one function divided by another function? So I'm going to consider this one. So first of all I can write this as f of x times g of x. So it is going to use the product rule where f of x is equal to cos of x and g of x is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay. So we need to calculate, calculate the derivatives of these functions. Well, this first f1 is just the standard derivative. It gives me minus sign. This g of x is a bit more tricky. This is really, I need to use the chain rule, so the function 
First of all, I take x and I change it into x squared plus 1. And then I do 1 over the function. Okay, so maybe I'll do it step by step just to avoid confusing. So I can write this down as a combination of two functions, u of b of x, where um, v of x is x squared plus 1, and u is the function which just takes me 1 over. So therefore, I need to differentiate these functions to apply the chain rule. Um, v prime of x is just 2x. u prime v of x is the derivative of 1 over, which is minus 1 over the same thing squared. Okay. So putting all that together, you get the result that g prime of x is equal to this times that, so it's minus 2x divided by x squared plus 1, all squared. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, so this is d by dx, so this is equal to d by dx of f of x, g of x. Okay, so now we can apply the chain rule. I've written it as to apply the product rule, sorry, I've written it as the product of two functions and I've calculated the, the derivatives of these two functions. Okay, so if I do that then, here we will get, therefore, d by dx of cos x divided by x squared plus 1. What's this? Well, the first thing is the derivative of f which is minus sine x times g, which is 1 over x squared plus 1, plus the derivative of, sorry, plus the function f, which is cos, times the derivative of g, which is minus 2x over x squared plus 1, all squared. Okay, so that's the answer. Um, you can probably simplify this a bit. I guess I would probably write this as minus, put everything over a common denominator, x squared plus 1 all squared. And then on the top, I've got x squared plus 1 times sine x plus 2x cos x. OK, so that's the answer in this case. This is about as difficult a question you will get in this course. Um, and in most physics courses, this is about as hard as the derivatives will get. Okay, so to calculate this, we had to use a combination of chain uh, product rule once and chain rule twice to calculate the derivative of this thing on the bottom. Okay, now there is a general formula which some people like to remember for cases like this. If you differentiate one function divided by another, then this is equal to f of x times g prime of x minus f prime of x times g of x divided by g of x squared. Okay. So you can prove this result just by applying the product rule and chain rule to 1 over g of x. And you know, it's, it's not too difficult. Some people like to remember this. Otherwise, you can just work it out in the way I worked it out here using the chain and product rules. Okay, so that was example number five. Okay, a final example I want to show you is an example of partial differentiation. Okay, partial differentiation is where differentiation, when you've got the function which is doesn't depend upon one variable, but depends upon several variables. So e.g. I can consider the function f of x, which is log x plus c squared over y. Okay, That's just an example. So in this case, you can differentiate, but you can differentiate with respect to any one of these three variables. And these give you what are called partial derivatives.
and they are written in the same way as the normal derivative except the d is replaced by this kind of curved d symbol so they are df by dx df by dy df by dz okay so that's the notation and the terminology they're partial derivatives written like this what they mean is for example if i want to find df by dx this is the derivative of the function f when I imagine that y and c are constant. So I treat in this formula, I treat y and z as if they were just numbers. Okay. things which do not change, and then I just differentiate the resulting function of x. Okay, um, And you can guess the others as well. So df by dy, that means the derivative of the same function when you hold x and z as being constants. Okay, and similarly, df by dz is the derivative of this function when you hold x and y constants. Okay. So that's the definition of the partial derivative, and let me just do this example for you. Okay. So if I look first at df by dx, so I treat y and z as just being constants, and I only focus on the x part of the function. So first of all, 1, of, one over y is just a constant. I can take that outside. Then I've got the derivative of the log, that gives me 1 over the function. And I need to multiply by the derivative of this function here, but the derivative with respect to x is just equal to 1. So that doesn't change. So that's the answer here. I'll do the derivative with respect to z next, because it's kind of similar. Again, y is a constant, so I can take that outside then the log gives me 1 over the function. But now I'm considering this as a function of z, not a function of x. So if I differentiate the function of z here, I get 2z, which I need to multiply on the top. And finally, the derivative with respect to y is a bit different. Well, in this case, if x and z are constants, then this is just some constant divided by y. Okay? And you know that if I differentiate d by dy of some constant divided by y, this just gives me minus the constant divided by y squared. And in this case, the constant a is just this log. So the answer I get is just minus log x plus c squared divided by y squared. OK, so this is an example of a function which depends upon three variables. And we can calculate the derivative with respect to any one of these variables treating the other two variables as if they were constants. Okay, so there will also be a couple of questions like this on the practice sheet too. And these kind of partial derivatives also come up a lot in physical problems. Okay, so that's the end of all the examples I wanted to give. So I've given a few examples of the chain and product rules and also their combination and talked about a few general cases which are, are quite useful to remember. And then finally, I've introduced this idea of partial differentiation too. So hopefully that should be all the help you need to do this week's practice sheet.